safe and you probably don't even know it. That's because unlike police who you see patrolling your neighborhoods, these guys, well, they do their jobs thousands of feet in the air ever since 9-11. These pilots have been flying over Richmond and other parts of Virginia, making sure that the skies are safe from terrorists and other threats. And for the very first time, they're allowing a Richmond television crew up in the air with them to see how they keep us safe. CBS 6 reporter Tim Trudell was chosen to take the mission, and he's here now with his special assignment. Operation Noble Eagle has been going on for nearly four years. Fighter jets have flown thousands of missions trying to protect our airspace. In that time, only a few journalists have ever had the opportunity to experience it firsthand. It wasn't easy. In fact, it took about six months to put this together. But in the end, the lessons I learned from those who trained so hard to protect us made it all worthwhile. It's probably one of the loudest places on the planet. We've had uh, a minimum of two airplanes, two pilots, and two maintenance crews available to launch for any possible contingency. But what goes on at this Air Force base in Hampton is often under the radar. From Langley, we launched the first three armed fighter aircraft that were uh, over the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. on September 11th. The 119th Fighter Wing. There's 36 people from North Dakota and Minnesota who live work, go to school, go to church in the, in, you know, the, Hampton, in the Hampton area, and they live here permanently. Since 1998, the North Dakota Air National Guard has had a permanent detachment at Langley. We're not living out here in tents. I mean, you know, we're, we've been here for a while, and we intend to stay. Flying missions for Operation Noble Eagle. The Department of Defense's response to the horrific attacks on September 11th and 2001. But before... I can suit up and see what they do firsthand. When you're strapped in, you're going to have kind of limited mobility. I've got to go through some of the training that they do. There's a comprehensive physical exam with a flight surgeon. Then, you blow that air through the eustachian tube, you're going to push this out. A crash course in physics. And sensations we're just not used to. Here's what 9 Gs, or 9 times their body weight for 15 seconds in a centrifuge, looks like. A force too much for these brave Air Force men and women. It's called G-Lock. Here the blood is pulled from her head, completely deflating her face. And this one is very rough to watch. Fortunately, I wouldn't have to undergo this absolutely brutal test. After 30 seconds with my head down, I didn't even feel like I was spinning until it stopped, and I was supposed to look at the clock on the wall. Oh, yeah. That's good times. <laughs> then there's... It's a big vacuum cleaner. We're sucking the... The air out of it. The altitude chamber. So if you go in all the way, this thing is going to stick to your face. After we're settled in our seats, <laughs> the chamber quickly climbs to 18,000 feet where the air thins out and you need to breathe oxygen to avoid what's called hypoxia. Hypoxia is the lack of oxygen in your blood. Here we're looking for signs of it so we can stay a step ahead when we're actually flying. Once uh, you get uh, not enough oxygen in your blood, your brain doesn't function as well, therefore you have reduced capabilities. We pull off our masks, and in just a few minutes, the effects of dizziness and hot flashes for me are clear. Your regulator's off and normal. Later, with the lights off, hypoxia is having an effect on your visual acuity. We look at a map, and all the colors blend together until up to your face and you can still breathe. With more oxygen, suddenly they seem to jump out. When we return to ground level, well, uh, I'm a little disoriented. Wasn't as bad as I expected. Got a little dizzy. But very much ready for what I was going to do. Just one week later. Plainly ground, alert mobile. Spider Force 7 has now been cleared by the tower for takeoff. I'll probably never forget what happened next. Things like the heat inside the cockpit from the sun beating down on us to feeling like you could almost reach out and touch the F-16s flying right beside us. But what were we doing? Where did we go and how long were we gone? I'll answer those questions for you tomorrow night. Hey, those pilots, they're a tight group. It's kind of amazing that they were able to let you in like that. Well, it's a tough society to become a part of, that's for sure. But I tell you this, the experience that I had with them, uh, the training that they were able to do and t day in and day out is so amazing. And just to have a few minutes with them, a few days with them, I think you'll enjoy the next part. And Quite an you, opportunity. Give you a yeah. call sign and we'll hold that for a later date. <laughs> tomorrow night. Thanks, Tim. As Tim mentioned, this series of special reports from inside the cockpit continues tomorrow. That's where you're going to get a glimpse of what most people never get to see, a first-hand look 
into just how Operation Noble Eagle keeps our 